Hi everyone. I welcome you all for this wonderful video lectures on human computer interaction. Today we'll see about uh, design rules and myself Shankar working as assistant professor in the department of computer science and engineering in RMD Engineering College and let us see uh, introduction about uh, design rules. Design rules or the rules a designer can follow in order to increase the usability of the eventual software product. The design rules can be classified among two dimensions based on the rules authority and generality. By authority, we mean an ind indication of whether or not the rule must be followed in design or whether it is only suggested. By generality, we mean whether the rule can be applied to many design situations or whether it is focused on a more limited application situation. Different types of design rules are there. The first one, principles are abstract design rules with high generality and low authority. Standards are specific design rules, high in authority and limited in application. Guidelines tend to be lower in authority and more general in applications. And designs for maximum usability is the goal of an interaction design. The principles of usability is the general understanding. The standard and guidelines helps you to the direction for the design. The design patterns are captured and reuse the design knowledge. And next, we have some types of design rules. The first one is principles and the next standards and the next one is guidelines. The principles are the abstract design rules and it has low authority and high generality. These are actually we had uh, discussed just before. The standards are the specific design rules. It has high authority and limited applications. The guidelines are the low, lower authority and it has more general applications. The diagram is given that. Oh. And next, principles to support the usability. The general principles are the most abstract design rules. These principles are divided into three main categories that are, that are uh, learnability, flexibility, and robustness. Let us see what is learnability. Learnability, the ease of, is with which new users can begin effective interaction and achieve maximal performance. Flexibility is the multiplicity of ways in which the user and system exchange the information. The last one is robustness. Robustness is the level of support provided to the user in determining successful achievement and assessment of goals. We'll see first, what is principles of learnability? The learnability concerns the features of the interactive system that allow novice users to understand how to use it initially and then how to attain a maximum level of performance. So it, it has many uh, learnability principles are there. We'll see one by one. The first one is predictability. The predictability determining the effect of future actions based on past interaction histories. Operation visibility, which refers to how the user is shown the availability of operations that can be performed next. Next one is synthesizability. Predictability focuses on the user's ability to determine the effect of future interactions. The principles of honesty relates to the ability of the user interface to provide an observable and informative account of a change. This notification can come immediately or eventually. Immediately means it requires no further interaction initiated by the user. If it appears eventually, after the explicit user directives to make the changes observable. The next principles of learnability is familiarity. 
the familiarity of an interactive system measures the correlation between the user's existing knowledge and the knowledge required for the effective interaction. Properties of familiarity can be guessability and affordedness. The next one is generalability. Generalizability. It, the users often try to extend their knowledge of specific interaction behavior to situations that are similar but previously unencountered. The generalizability of an interactive system supports this activity, leading to a more complete predictive model of the system for the users. The next principle of learnability is consistency. Consistency is the likeness in behavior arising from similar situations or similar task objectives. Consistency can be expressed in terms of the form of input expressions or output responses with respect to the meaning of actions in some conceptual model of the system. Next, we'll see the principle of flexibility. Flexibility refers to the multiplicity of ways in which the end user and the system exchange the information. It has some summary of principles affecting flexibility. The first one is dialogue initiative. During an interaction between user and system as a dialogue between partners, it is important to consider which partner has initiative in the conversation. The system can initiate the dialogue in which case the user simply respond to requests for information. We call this types of dialogue system preemptive. Alternatively, the user may be entirely free. Alternatively, the user may be entirely free to initiate any action towards the system, in which, in which case the dialogue is user preemptive. Generally, the user ability to preempt the system is maximized while the system's ability to preempt the user is minimized. The next one is multi-threading. A thread of a dialogue is a coherent subset of that dialogue. Multi-threading of the user system dialogue allows for user interaction to support more than one task at a time. Concurrent multi-threading allows simultaneous communication of information pertaining to separate tasks Interleaved multi-threading permits a temporal overlap between separate tasks, but stipulates that at any given instant, the dialogue is restricted to a single task. Next one is task migrability. Task migrability concerns the transfer of control for execution of tasks between system and user. It should be possible for the user or system to pass the control of a task over to the other or promote the task from a completely internalized one to a shared and cooperative venture. Hence, a task that is internal to one can become internal to other or shared between two partners. Spell checking a paper is a good example of the need for task migrability. The next one is substitutivity. Substitutivity requires that equivalent values can be substituted for each other. It contributes towards flexibility by allowing the user to choose whichever form best suits the needs of the moment. The representation multiplicity illustrates flexibility for state rendering. Equal opportunity blurs the distinction between input and output at the interface. Next one is customizability. Customizability is the modifiability of the user interface by the user or the system. It can be user initiative modification called adaptability and system initiated modification refer adaptivity. Adaptability refers to the user's ability to adjust the form of input and output. Adaptivity is automatic customization of the user interface by the system. The distinction between adaptivity and adaptability is that the user plays an explicit role in adaptability, whereas his role in adaptive interface is more implicit. Next one, observability. Principles of 
robustness. We'll see what is robustness is first. The robustness of interaction covers features that support the successful achievement and assessment of the goals. Let us see the summary of principles affecting robustness. The first one is observability. The observability allows the users to evaluate the internal state of the system by means of its preservable representation at the interface. Observability can be discussed under five other principles, browsability, defaults, reachability, persistence, and operation visibility. Browsability allows the user to explore the current internal state of the system via the limited view provided at the interface. The availability of default can assist the user by passive call, which reduces the number of physical actions necessary to input a value. Providing default values is a kind of error prevention mechanism. There are two kinds of default values that is static and dynamic. Reachability refers to the possibility of navigation through the observable system states. Persistence deals with the duration of the effect communication act and the ability of the user to make the use of that effect. The next one is recoverability. Recoverability is the ability to reach a desired goal after recognition of some error in a previous interaction. There are two directions in which recovery can occur. One is forward and another one is backward. Forward error recovery involves the acceptance of the stay, current state and negotiation from that state towards the desired state. Backward error recovery is an attempt to undo the effects of previous interaction in order to return a prior state before proceeding. Recovery can be initiated by the system or by the user. The principles of commensurate effort states that if it is difficult to undo, the, undo a given effort on a state, then it should have been difficult to do in the first place. The next one is responsiveness. Responsiveness measures the rate of communication between uh, the system and user. Response time is generally defined as the duration of time needed by the system to express state change to the users. The next one is task performance. Task completeness address the coverage issue and task adequacy address the user's understanding of the task. Task completeness refers to the level to which the system service can be mapped onto all of the user's tasks. So this diagram shows about the user designing rules, using the designing rules. It suggests how to increase the uh, usability and how it differs in generality and authority. Next, we'll see about the standards. Standards for interactive system designs are usually set by national or international bodies to ensure compliance with a set of design rules by a large community. Standards can apply specifically either the hardware or the software used to build the interactive system. ISO 9241 defines usability as effectiveness, efficiency, and sat satisfaction with users' accomplished tasks. Next, we'll see about the guidelines. The the majority of design rules for interactive systems are suggestive and more general guidelines. Guidelines can be abstract or specific. The guidelines can also be automated by providing a direct means for translating detailed design specification into actual implementation. Abstract guidelines are applicable during early life cycle activities. Detailed guidelines are applicable during later life cycle activities. Understanding justification for guidelines aids in resolving con conflict. Next, we'll see about the golden rules and heuristics. Design rules are broad brush design rules. They provide use. Uh, they provide us useful checklist for good design. Different set of heuristics are there. First one is Nielsen's ten heuristics. Second one, Schneiderman's golden rules. And then last one, Norman's seven principle. Let us see one by one in detail. In uh, first, we'll see about Schneiderman's eight golden rules. 
for interface design. The eight golden rules are the first one is strive for consistency. Strive for consistency in action sequence, layout, terminology, command use, and so on. The next one is enable frequent users to use shortcuts, shortcuts uh, such as abbreviations, special key, sequence, and uh, macros to perform regular familiar actions or more quickly. The third one is offer informative feedback for every user action at a level appropriate to magnitude of the action. Fourth one, design dialogues to yield closure so that the user knows when they have completed the task. Fifth one, offer error prevention and simple error handling so that ideally users are prevented from making mistake. And if they do, they are offered clear and informative instructions to enable them to recover. Sixth one, permit easy reversal of action in order to relieve anxiety and encourage exploration since the user knows that he can always return to the previous state. Seventh one, support internal locus of controls so that the user is in control of the system which responds to his action. Eighth one, Reduce short-term memory loads by keeping display simple, consolidating multiple pages, and uh, providing time for learning action sequence. Next, we'll see about our Norman's seven principles. The seven principles are, the first one is, use both knowledge in the world and knowledge in the head. Provide the necessary knowledge within the environment and their operation should be transparent. Second one, simplify the structure of tasks. Third one, make things visible, bridge the gulfs of execution and evaluation. Fourth one, get the mapping right. Fifth one, exploit the power of constraint, both natural and artificial. Constraints are things in the world that make it impossible to do anything but the correct action in the correct way. Sixth one, design for error. Anticipate the errors the users could make and design recovery into the system. Seventh one, when all else fails, standardize. Let us see. Let us see the HCA design patterns. Pattern is an approach to reuse knowledge about successful design solution. A pattern is an invariant solution to a recurrent problem within a specific context. Patterns do not exist in isolation, but are linked to other patterns in language, which enable complete design to be generated. This design patterns has some set of characteristics. We'll see the characteristics of design patterns. The first one is capture design practice is not a theory. Capture the essential common properties of good examples of design represents design knowledge at varying levels, range from social and organizational issues through conceptual design to detailed budget design. And it all, these are in, intuitive and uh, readable and can therefore be used for communication between all stakeholders. A uh, pattern language should be generative and assist in the development of complete designs. So thank you all for watching this video lecture still. Uh, thank you, thank you all. And the references for these slides are taken from the given references only. Uh, once again, and thank you all for listening this video lecture. Thank you.